What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the pod. Um, special guest today, we got Jake Ryan out of Georgia. Uh, <clears throat> what part of what part of Georgia are you from? Uh, it's like Alpharetta. It's like thirty minutes from Atlanta. Nice, nice, nice. And you're going to school at uh, Kentucky, right? Yep. Good deal. All right, Bo, tell me a little bit about yourself <clears throat> and how we met and stuff. Uh, so I'm from uh boston originally so that's kind of how we met because we go to the cape in the summer and fish uh so we met like shark fishing one time and then we kind of just like started hanging out after that uh i go to school in kentucky uh i lived in georgia uh canada and tennessee as well so i kind of been all around the block but that's about yes, it sir. yes sir all right so dude we've known each other for a couple years now during the summer we've been Hitting the East Coast, Cape Cod, catching tuna, sharks, striped bass, goes on and on. And then you come down to Texas a couple years. You've been down here, what, twice, three times? Yeah. Twice. Yeah, to uh, turkey hunt and deer hunt. Um, he was actually just down here like a month ago. But we're going to run it back to last spring, spring 2023. So about six, seven m- months ago. Uh, Jake came down for a turkey hunt. Um, we were hunting some Rio Grands and DTEX, DTEX Whitetails. Um, that was a crazy trip. That was a crazy trip. That was nuts. Um, so we ended up, who got a turkey that trip? It was. I think just Carson and Jabari and Dylan, Car- right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we. Me, Jake, and uh, Chris had a crazy experience hunting down at the river. Uh, you go ahead and explain that. <clears throat> yeah, that was crazy. We were uh, down there. We heard some gobblers in the morning when we were calling, and then uh, we saw we ran up by the feeder, and there was a bunch of hogs, and we kind of snuck in on them. And then I uh, had the shotgun, and they came running at us, and I hit them twice, once in the head and like once in the body. And he ate two uh, 12 gauge shots like nothing and he just kept charging <laughs> us. We are out of ammo, it was bad, but we already got the other gun and then we got him. Got him down. Hey, let's just roll that clip real fast for y'all, for y'all to at least see the stock and whatnot. All right, so, um, yeah, that was real cool. You didn't get a, you didn't get a turkey though, so we chased those motherfuckers. Yeah. We saw a on bunch, on. A bunch of uh, turkeys, but dude, they're tough. They're they're smart, but I know they're at they're least big the birds. Got one. Yes, well, at least we got one for sure, for sure. But you still got you still have so okay. That was last season's tag because you had to buy a brand new tag, right? Yeah. Okay, so then so I've come back though because. I guess it like came with the hunting license or something. I don't know. They right. like just like mailed me my tags to my house and I have them. So I have to come down and run it back. We, so before, a too. we do need a coyote. We need, we still got a lot on the list to get you. Oh yeah. Um, so let's, uh, let's transfer over to summertime Cape Cod. Um, tell, tell the folks a little bit about your, uh, profession addiction with saltwater fishing and whatnot <clears throat> yeah, i don't i think i don't know hunting's fun but i feel like fishing's just different like i just the the fun i have fishing is just so it's like so much different than hunting um but yeah i've been fishing ever since i was a kid um my uncle kind of showed me how to fish like a long time ago my dad used to fish a lot for stripers and stuff but my uncle kind of introduced me to tuna fishing when i was really young um Reed's probably seen the picture a few times, but I have a picture of me one night. I was like six or seven with a tuna and a mahi. And so ever since then, I've just been kind of wanting to get back out there. Um, this summer, we had a great season. We caught a bunch of giant stripers to start off before Reed was even up there. And then we went to the canyons a little and then did some tuna trips. I had a really good mahi trip at the end of uh, the summer with some of my buddies from the tackle shop. So that was fun. but. That was a wild trip. Yeah, I uh, 
So I came up there, I guess, mid-summer. Part of, I guess, is right at the beginning of July. And did, you caught a big striker before I got there, right? And then you caught one on my boat. Yeah, right. we were catching them like pretty good. I mean, I was going out there and catching like, we did a little bit of commercial fishing with all the other guys I know up there and we were catching like a bunch of 35 plus inches and uh, we ended up catching a, a few giants, but I did catch that big one on your boat. That was a good time with that Pop top. water, pop water. Yes. Like, we, we probably caught a hundred fish that day in like an hour and a half, two hours. Yes, crazy. I, wish, I don't think we have a video of that, but I'd share that. Yeah, um, that was crazy. Um, <clears throat> we did. I think we did. Did we do it? We did a bass fishing tournament, or was that the year before? That was the year before. Okay, I, I wiped you. I wiped you up on that freshwater bass. But yeah, uh, yeah we killed it in the summer. I wish. I don't know. I wish the t like there would be more tuna there. Like you wouldn't have to wait till like late August, September, October, November. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think like at least my parents are going to be going up a little later so they can stay like late August. Yeah, because I was actually I was just talking to uh, Derek and um, they said like those guys went out like December 2nd when the season opened up and they there was like dude, there was like 60 boats um, yeah. like northeast corner of Stellwagen. They were all like out of the 60 boats, 50 boats caught tuna over like 100 inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, so, uh, there's been some big ones caught up there, but it does suck because, like, we get out of school so early in May, and then there's, like, I mean, there's really only striper, and then it kind of is, like, a dead zone for, like, two weeks, and then the tuna come in. But by the time that they really get, like, good and when the bite's really good, it's, like, time to go back to school, which sucks, especially with the Giants because they've been coming in later and later, but hopefully this year they'll come earlier. I might uh, get a commercial for my boat, so... Get them on a giant. Can run it up. Yeah, dude. Um, that'd be cool. Um, overall, out of 10, what, what would you rate the season? Just overall with multiple species? Uh, For you personally? I think probably like an 8, 8 out of 10. I didn't get to tuna fish as much. I mean, we probably, I don't know how many trips I did a lot, but like this summer, I'm really trying to like lock in and do a lot. Of, of trips but hopefully i can get an internship and then uh be done with that by tuna season and then just go out whenever the weather's good but that cape cod wind's tough because it's always windy i know what is it east of the least what's the best uh out of how about out of 10 just in terms of like where the fish there where are they in you know where are they at the soar where are they at the rips where are they at you know inside the bay back side of the islands out of 10 where do you rate that uh i'd say like probably like a for tuna i'd say like a six out of ten seven out of ten there was a lot of mahi we had that trip with uh my buddies that i took out we ended up finding this buoy and there was probably 60 mahi on it um some of the biggest ones i've seen in the cape in a long time i mean we caught a few that were probably two pounds but there was one that kept trying to eat this huge topwater plug that was probably 20 25 pounds um that's kind of what i wish i like i kind of want to get a spear gun and like be able to spear gun out there because it was i mean it was like a i mean it was crazy you look down and they're just sitting all around that buoy but um you jump in that water i don't know i guess I mean, crazy the great whites aren't gonna be out there so that's good but um i don't know i feel like the tuna were a little bit weak this year I mean, I know you guys didn't catch as many giants as usual. Right. But I think the weather was bad too, but I don't know. The bass fishing was really, really, really good this year, which was nice. Mm. But same with the Bonita. The Bonita came in early, which was nice before I left for college. So we got to run that up. Um, but yeah, it was good. Hopefully the tuna are in thicker numbers this year. I know, I know. And uh, just tell everyone what uh, boat you're running. Uh, we have a Grady White. Um, we just got some new outriggers on it, so we're hoping to get it. It's about like 29 feet, so uh, nice. it's like 28 and a half or whatever. But yeah, we got some uh, outriggers this year, some new ones. We got some new rod holders, so hopefully we can run some uh, 
commercial fishing and stuff like that, maybe. It's always a tough decision because there's not a lot of time that we have to go out and commercial fishing, you kind of got to lock it in with just commercial fishing, that's about it. But I kind of like running south of the vineyard because being where we live, it's a lot easier of a run, so. What days are the, uh, I forgot what days for striped bass at least are the commercial days? Do you I remember? Was, I think it, I think it was like Wednesdays or something. Yeah, they'll probably change it this year, but I don't know. Striped bass fishing is like, like especially with the the holes that I have, like it's it can be profitable because you don't have to run far and it doesn't really matter what the wind is, but it can also be tricky because 35 inches is a big fish. Yeah, that's true. No, for sure. What do you think about those rules this past year, the tuna, that you could only catch giants certain days? It was like, you couldn't catch giants Friday, yeah. Saturday, Tuesday or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that? because the quota will fill up so fast because, you know, like what they say is like, I always heard in the talk shop is everyone wants to be a tuna fisherman, you know? Everyone wants to say that they're like a tuna fisherman and that's the problem because these fish are in such high numbers in the Cape that uh, like you can drop down a bait and just get a lucky bite. And so if they don't regulate that, then, you know, the population will be down like it was, I don't even remember what, like 1960s or something when they almost went extinct, so. Yeah. But hopefully this year there's a lot like, I want to see some stuff like some Marlin and some Wahoo. I know, stuff. I know, well you've been, I mean, you've been targeting the swordfish and you've been hitting some white marlins, right? Yeah, we have uh, we caught a few a few summers ago. I'd fish some tournaments and stuff with some other guys that uh, are really good at fishing, know what they're doing. Catch some swordfish. I still haven't caught a wahoo up there yet, but maybe this summer we'll lock one in. Um, Did you see the picture of uh, the one Carson and my dad caught a couple years back? Yeah, we had... Uh, when I was out in the canyons with Carson and your dad, we had that wahoo bite. Yeah, on dude. On the bed. What happened? We, we woke up to the reel just screaming. We couldn't clear the lines. It just started airing out. It was crazy. And then just came off. <laughs> Big wahoo, too. Probably 50, 60 pounder. Jeez. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I'm seemed, excited. <laughs> it seemed like when we went, though, it was kind of dead, though. I mean... There was some marlin caught and stuff, but it wasn't as hot as it had been. I don't know. It's just those tournaments really make it on and off because how many people fish them? And if you have 70 boats going out to fish the canyons for three days, it's going to be off after that or two days. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> those tournaments can mess up some of the, the fishing. Um, you got to run back shark fishing too. That was crazy this summer. I know. All right. Tell them, you got to tell them about the stingray real fast. Oh yeah, we had a, uh, Reed wanted to go to some other beaches. He didn't trust my word, even though I live like kind of in the area that we have a shark fish. It's further away from them. So like we kind of rotated out cause like I'll drive up to their house and hang out and then they'll drive down and shark fish. It's about the same drive. So um, there are these beaches I know people have been catching them on. We always catch them on these same beaches. And um, I wanted to run those back and Reed wanted to go to somewhere else. and. We went to the cellar spot and it was so windy. I tried kayaking the baits out. It was like the waves were coming over the kayak. It was a mess, but he ended up coming back to where I live, uh, to the beaches I wanted to fish. And uh, yeah, we put our baits out in probably what, like 30, 45 minutes. We had a take and then like 20 minutes after that, we hooked up um, to this huge stingray. I mean, we fought it for probably what, two hours. Uh, yeah, two hours. You guys didn't leave till like two, so you probably got back at like three. I'm know. more watched than fought, but I didn't even touch the rod, I don't think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was crazy. We had the wind, it was dark, and just made a crazy, crazy fight. That was cool. One of those uh, kids that came from the bait shop, did you hear about that? He caught that, uh, he was with the kid that caught that tarpon. Yeah. Oh, so he was one of them? He was one of the kids? He was like with them earlier, I guess, and uh, or something, but harping off Cape Cod. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, those fish swim in schools too, so I guarantee you there was more of them. But it just shows you, you know, you never know what you're gonna catch. Right. But well, that's when all that warm water comes in, you know. Right. Yeah. We got to uh, yeah, get gotta... back tagging the sharks this summer, dude. Cause I got that kit from Noah. Oh, did you? 
Yeah, and they sent it to me, and I got we gotta get better about that, dude. I gotta use those tags up. But There's I caught that tagged brown this summer. I caught a, a brown shark this summer that was tagged already. It was cool. <clears throat> so how did what's the process of tagging? Uh, I think you like so like you like send them pictures showing that you catch them, and then um, you can like apply for it, and like they like grant it or whatever, and then they send you like a little metal spike thing and you like put it in their skin and the tags like attached to it so once it goes in the tag sticks in which is cool and then they mm -hmm. can then you like send them a form and they like know when it was tagged and like the gender and like all that stuff right so that's a that's good cool. process I mean, oh yeah for sure that's cool <clears throat> all right what's well, that we gotta take a trip this summer we should try to just shark fish like go make a fishing or something on my boat dude i know i mean i want to like i want to catch a fresher i want to catch a mako stuff like that the good thing dude. is where i live is like it's right near all that water that warm water the warm so water fish. yeah it's probably like an hour ride yeah that'd be cool. i mean you did that on your boat that one night did you i don't oh you got yeah. strips can you get like strip spice or something yeah yeah, we took yeah. thirties out and we uh, put balloons out with whole bluefish in like 200, 300 feet of water and just giant sharks. We don't even know what they were. We couldn't even get them to the boat. Big but shark guy. We need bring, a... like we gotta bring like our eighties out or something. Dude, yeah. you need you need to get a boomstick. I know. You know. Yeah. Get next to the, next to the boat. Because oh, yeah. what the heck are you gonna do if you're trying to keep a? Because can you can you eat can you eat thresher? Uh, yeah, Thresher and Mako. Yeah. Apparently Mako's really good. I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't believe that summer. This summer we saw that swordfish on the top. That was really cool. I've never seen that. Yeah. We should have harpooned it, but we did just didn't know the size. It's not worth it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, literally we <laughs> were up in the tower. It literally just came right across the bow. It was just sitting on the top sunbathing. It was crazy. <clears throat> yeah, that's wild. It's Especially since they're usually at uh, deep during the day. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's transfer over to this fall. Um, you came down to Detect Whitetails in when was it? November, or late November. Uh, yeah. We did some hunting, trying to get you on a big whitetail, South Texas buck and the Golden Triangle. Um, Tell, tell them a little bit about that experience. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't really, like going into it, like we kind of messed around the first day in the blind. Um, I shot a doe. Uh, I didn't really like, you know, like expect anything of it. I mean, obviously there's some giant white tails at DTEX, but you know, it's tough for like Reed to be able to like figure out like which one's good to shoot. And like, he you know, he can't control if they come out. So. He might have a bunch of shooters, but going down there for three days is a gamble because you don't know if they're going to come out. Um, but yeah, one of the bucks that he's seen before uh, came out like right in the morning, uh, like a little bit before shooting light. And he was with another buck and then he left and came and circled back around. And then he was right at the feeder and Reed told me to take him. So I took the shot and dropped him. I don't know, it was probably what, like a hundred and... 25 yard shot 150 yard shot yeah yeah uh, yeah 100 120 give or take let's uh let's show the, let's show the game camera pick of curly that's what uh we ended up naming the buck stood up there real fast uh good looking deer we actually only saw him dude i saw him like a couple times on camera when i picked the cards up that was the first time i've ever seen that buck on on the property uh, and then we started to get a little uh kind of um, whatever you want to call it, seeing them every day, every night, certain time, routine kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then we knew exactly where to go. Uh, pump jack blind towards the back of the property. And um, he came out, tell him about how he came out. He came like to the blind and whatnot and turned around. Yeah, he like ran right up on the blind and we didn't really have a shot. And then he just kind of turned around and then wandered around. And I thought he was gone and then Next thing you know, he, he came out like way behind the feeder and uh, came up and then, you know, I was a little nervous and there was deer everywhere so we couldn't shoot. And then finally he just came out alone after he scared a bunch of deer off. And then 
that was it. But it's, yeah, it's a cool deer. He's super wide. He's got that. We call him curly because he has that uh, like curl drop time, which is cool. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's a good deer. Sweet deer. I still need to score him, um, and then I'll be getting him to the tax here. I'm gonna try. I mean, I was gonna do it tomorrow. You know what? Carson could probably do it. I gotta, I gotta fill fill up that form still. So we'll get it here soon. Yeah, hopefully that um, PWD goes away too. Yeah, let me get that out of there. Oh, we forgot. You shot that black buck last spring, right? Yeah. Um, still haven't gotten him back from the tax. Was that was that last spring? Yeah, that was right when we went turkey hunting. Okay, so yeah, you also got a black buck that trip too. Yeah, that was a crazy hunt too. We like, I like to. I didn't know if I wanted to shoot one, and then like within like two hours before my flight, I was like, let's go shoot one, and you know, we had trouble stalking them. I would think it'd be a lot harder or a lot easier to shoot them, but they were really smart too. Um, they kind of would come in, and then they wouldn't give us a chance to like really be able to scope them out. And then finally, this one, the herder, he was just with a bunch of does, and he didn't really care. Um, right. Let's take that shot. So that was nice too. Yeah, that was cool. That was a that was a cool trip. It still has not um, freeze down in South Texas yet, so yeah. these deer are still uh, doing whatever they want instead of coming to feed and horns and whatnot rattling. Um, so, but we did open that uh, that that food plot's all grown up now. So those deer, that first hunt that you sat in, yeah, that food plot that's open now. So should be a bunch of deer rolling up in there. Yeah, you gotta get uh, down there. How many? I When's the season over? Like the 14th or something? 21st. So, oh, okay. Late Texas. Yeah, I'm planning when I get back from Argentina, go down for like two weeks. Yeah, I think it only goes to like out. six in Georgia, maybe, or seventh. Yeah. Which is crazy, but. It's usually the 16th, but I think they pushed it back a week for some reason. Yeah. Which is That's good. Nice. Honestly, yeah, that, like. I don't know. The early like October hunting is so bad. It's so hot. Like they should literally just adjust everything a week. I mean a month. Um, yeah. It's gonna be nuts when you get back, though. I know. Yeah. I know. It's, it should be pretty cold and should be should be good hunting. You gotta tell them about that bucket you saw that you showed me. The one that you'd never seen before. Oh that yeah, one. the drop time buck. Yeah. yeah let's throw it up there real fast um so that bug i was sitting at ground blind on the side of a food plot and uh i didn't see anything there was like nothing coming out it was geez it was beginning of november um and then i was getting out of the blind and my bow blind zipping it zipping it um up and way in the back towards the brush like if you think like this is the brush and then your food plot a little gap he was standing right there looking right at me and i got a couple pics of him and he's just a wide frame heavy buck uh, with a big drop probably probably eight inch drop and it just kind of went like really really cool um i haven't seen him since i saw him that one time and that's it so it really yeah, just amazes you <laughs> Any ideas on what you want to shoot or no? Dude, I don't know. I mean, I'm still looking for some kind of true South Texas chocolate horn. Like that one you shot. Like that's a perfect example of a the buck I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, you got to find, I mean, there's probably so many on there that you don't even know about. I know, dude. It's crazy. You just got to keep scouting. That's what I think my brother's going there, dude. He's doing some scouting in some places he usually doesn't hunt this weekend. Yeah, he's uh, got to get a big one too. You guys both have to get some big ones. I know. Out. We haven't we haven't knocked any good ones down for a couple of years now. I know. So, it's well, tough, I, tough not to want to. You know, you got to let them grow. See yes, how sir. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you're thinking yeah. about <laughs> you're thinking about coming down this spring, right? Yeah, we gotta do. We really have to get some uh, coyotes down. I mean, we have had brutal luck with the coyote hunting. Uh, I feel like this trip was good, though. I mean, I didn't miss a single shot the whole time. Yeah, you did. Six. We shot a ton of pigs, um, that buck, and then I didn't get to shoot on the coyotes, but um, 
You know, we had terrible luck. No, you shot once. You shot at that one that was running. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this man shot at a coyote. Guarantee at a 800 at 1,000 yards. No kidding. Oh, it it might have been a black buck. I don't even know what oh, I was shooting. Jeez. Jeez. Was but, dude, there were so many. It was so hard to tell. It was just a mess. That hunt was crazy. But yeah. as we got, like, later on in the night, uh, in the days, we, like, set it in the thermal again and then we kind of got ready and then that was it yeah do those we got i'm all set up now i got my call set up what the yeah. call and then uh me and carson both got our two two threes ready to roll dude the accessories okay. i got on mine are crazy well, dude it's gonna be so much different having two 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 threes now i don't know and i don't know with me but i got a brand new tripod that's actually like nice like it's really good so, yeah, that other gun was good that y'all have, but it's just a, kind of a, like, it's just the thermal's not as, like, advanced. Like, it's a super nice thermal, but, like, the technology's just changed. Yeah. It's a lot different, but at least now we'll have three guns, and then we have a scanner, too, so we have four people, and then yeah. really dial in, you know? All right. So once you can get, like, positioning, like, if you can have one person shooting this way, and one person shooting this way, and one person shooting this way, then, like, if any cutty comes in, then you can just shoot. You don't have to tell them, you know. Yeah. Because it's easier than having one person like looking all around. Right. Like, it's this way. so exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. When we had Dylan and Jabari out there, we had we had four gunners and uh, and then one scanner. So yeah. it was crazy. We were like SEAL Team Six out there in the field. Just everyone had a side, like their own spot to like look at. Yeah, and, it's just uh, to be careful, but you know, we, we always are about good about stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Because so, uh, I mean it's scary, but I know, I know. Plus but, looking out for snakes and what everything else that's out there. Dude, that was crazy about that bird dog. You gotta tell me about that. Oh, dude, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so we were we were dove we were quail hunting out in one of our fields and um uh one of the guys dog that I came out with a bunch of quail. Um, he was working the working the quail for us and he had brought his dogs and uh, there was one of his dogs got bit by a rattlesnake. Um, and uh, yeah, it, okay, we have 10 minutes left. Okay, so um, yeah, one of his dogs got bit by the by a rattlesnake and um, just laying right by a cactus the snake was and a dog just went right by that cactus and got bit right in the face um and that dog ended up dying like i think it was the next day um which is even crazy it even survived that long but apparently that dog got bit already once yeah that's survived. what the guy was saying he said it's been bit before and i guess this time it was just i don't know it must have been more venom or I don't know. Right. It was effective or something. Yeah. All right. So we got. I got ten minutes left for some reason. I got to upgrade if I want more time. But um, so let's go ahead and talk about. Um, so this coming spring, you're hoping to come down for a turkey, get your revenge tour, big revenge right. tour. Um, which you already have tags. You already have. I think was it two turkey tags. Uh, turkey tags, something like that. It's three or four, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so you already got your turkey tags. Just gotta come back down here and get you on one. You can use that uh, sick goose call that you got. I know. You can go to work with that. And then. Uh, uh, go get some coyotes, pigs, turkey. Coyotes, pigs. Shoot, maybe even an axis. <laughs> Load yeah, that wall out. Axis. Yes. we to do that. And you can, I'll film you or something shooting one. Try to kill a big one. I know. Would you say and that then, half of them are winter? uh velvet and half of them are summer uh it's about no it's about 75 percent are our summer so they're like they're ready to hunt in, like spring summer yeah so so they'll be like velvet when they'll be full velvet like perfect like like april stuff like that oh, they, yeah. yeah before they hard horn in the summer yeah um so that'll be that'll fun be and then get one of those on the mat on the wall Dude, I know. This would be crazy. I haven't mounted something in a long time. So, yeah. We got to try to get a too or something. 
Yeah, dude, Bobcat. Carson actually got a Bobcat the other day. Uh, so, uh, would they kill a coyote, a Bobcat, a bunch yeah, of hogs? Yeah, a bunch of hogs. That's crazy. But, uh, he actually, that, that rattlesnake that bit that dog, yeah, it was that one, I think. He got it tanned. He's getting it. Oh, he uh, did? Yeah. Probably doing yeah, like a wall tan cool. or something. That was a big rattlesnake. You'll have to Dude, throw it was. That's yeah, probably, I think I have a photo of that, yeah. Yeah, I'll send you the picture, right? I mean, it's probably <laughs> a rattlesnake. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it was <clears throat> um, And then we'll have summer again. This coming summer. I know we got to lock in for this season. Run it back. Got a brand new boat coming. Be able to get to the canyons in about two hours. Yeah. So, Dude, you got to come up earlier too. You came up so late this summer. I swear. It's like the I think, dude. I think what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna come up early, like beginning of June. Yeah, come uh, up. I'll striped take, bass fish. Yeah, we can just commercial fish on my boat. I know. Well, I might. This one thing. I might go up early, strike bass fish for like, like a week, just straight, yeah, whatever, and then I'll leave and I'll come back. I think I'll do that. Like two weeks fish, go back for two weeks, and then come back beginning in July, and yeah. stay for the. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter for you living on that cold water side, because, like for me, it's like, like from like May to like June, all those stripers are like around where I live, and then they move up to where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can catch them right. basically all summer. I mean, we can catch them, but it's more bluefish and stuff here. So, but right. yeah, earlier and we'll have to go to that hole okay. I have and catch some giants on the um, okay. live, which is we always got a fun. lot, a lot of fish to catch. Oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Go ahead, some turkeys, and then soon enough, we'll be ready for deer season again. Wrap all it back around. around. I know. I'll I'll know. With the group. Ugh. Run it back. There's, I'm trying to. Javari's trying to get me up to Oklahoma to do what? My coyote hunt. Where? Uh, I think his place in like Arnett. I might do that in January. Where's that at? It's uh, west Oklahoma. Yeah, I wonder how far that is from me. Probably not that far. Um, yeah, I mean, six hours. I know. You just need to graduate already, so you can. You're not right. on a strict schedule. I always be on the move. Yes, and you'd be mobile. Be mobile. Yeah, I wish I could come down right now or something, but we got Christmas and all that, and you're going to Argentina, but... Yeah. What the wait? It, it sucks it, like, plateaus out, like, the season. Like, there's nothing coming up, you know? You have to wait for turkey, but... All right. Unless you're trying to hit some exotics. But, I mean, then again, like, February is, like, when coyotes are breeding. So, like, that's a really good time. Like, you're, like, yeah. trying to get some coyote hunts to... Starting hitting some those calls, less you know, less rabbit stuff and more dog stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, we got about four minutes left. Uh, you have anything else you want to say before we wrap this thing up? <clears throat> Real. I think we're all set. Yeah, I think we're definitely do a part two video or get you back oh, on yeah. here for sure. Sure. Um, that was cool. So, all right. Well, y'all heard it first from Jake Ryan himself out of georgia um appreciate you coming on bro yeah no problem all right peace we'll see you later <clears throat>